to be on that. And the standby, I love that word, the standby. I don't know if you know what it's like to stand by on an airplane, but it's like if you couldn't get a seat and you'd like to get on that plane, you can go on standby and you can literally sit right at the gate and wait to see if there's an opening. So the Holy Spirit stands by you just in case there's something you need where he can jump on board and help you. I love it, I love it, I love it. He will not come to you. Now, this is such an important part. Into close fellowship with you. Can everybody say close fellowship? But if I go away, I will send him to you to be in close fellowship with you. Say close fellowship. I love that. God created us for fellowship. And he wants to communicate with us. A relationship is not one-sided. You don't just do all the talking and God never says anything. God speaks. He speaks in many different ways. He speaks through nature. He speaks through the still small voice. He speaks mainly through his word. God can even speak through our circumstances. God speaks in our heart. Sometimes he speaks even through desires, not desires of the flesh, but real true desires of the spirit. And if you don't believe that God can talk to you, you know, when we talk to God, it's prayer. But if we say God talks to us, they think we're paranoid. <laughs> and you know, you go in certain circles. I mean, you just about get run out of the building if you say God said. But that, to me, I don't understand that because it's all over the Bible. My sheep know my voice, the voice of a stranger they will not follow. Now, obviously, you know, you can get in trouble thinking that you hear from God. There's learning, there's wisdom. But one of the ways that you learn is by making some mistakes and being willing to go back and say, well, man, I thought that was God, but it wasn't. And I sure made a fool out of myself. So <laughs> let me learn from this and go on. But see, there's, there's so much, and I hope just some of you, at least some of you, here and watching my television, you're kind of like, while I go to church, I go to church, I'm an usher. I believe the doctrines. No, I'm talking about close fellowship. Jesus didn't die so we could have a religion. He died so we could have a relationship with God through him. And see, God cares about everything that concerns you. I mean, the littlest, tiniest things that wouldn't even make any sense to anybody else. God cares about that with you. He's concerned about everything that concerns you. Absolutely everything. Close fellowship. And if nothing else, I want this message to bring you into a greater awareness of how the Holy Spirit is with you all the time. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. When I go away, I'm going to send you another comforter. He's been with you and he will be in you. How much closer can you get than in you? Come on. I mean, being a Christian is absolutely taking a journey with God is an amazing spiritual journey. There is nothing boring and dull about life with God. Now, if all it is to you is a trip to church each week, go home and act like you're not changed, go back to church, then that's, you're going to get tired of that pretty fast. But I'm telling you what, to know who you are in Christ and to know your inheritance in him and to know the power that belongs to you as a believer, to know the power of the Holy Spirit that you can have in your life all the time. Well, there's many other things it says here, and I have to get into some of them later because I want to finish up with this, this one scripture. You say, well, you know, do I have the Holy Spirit? If you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. I think that that's one of the places where we've made a mistake, you know, is to act like people don't have the Holy Spirit if they've not had some Pentecostal experience. First of all, we want to be careful about putting too much emphasis on experiences. You know, some people 
have them. Some have some that are genuine. Some have some that are... <laughs> you know what I mean. Some people. You know, I can remember when Dave and I were back in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we'd be in camp meetings and the presence of God would be so strong. And, you know, I would say to Dave, did you feel that? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> and you know, honestly, I would tend back then just to think, you know, he just was kind of out of the loop. <laughs> and that's, that's what we do sometimes if somebody's not getting it the way we got it. Now, come on, listen to me. Let me tell you something. Do not ever compare how God deals with you to how he deals with anybody else. That's number one. And number two, equally important, do not invalidate somebody else's experience just because you haven't had it. Matter of fact, that's good enough. I want to say it again. Don't think that the way God deals with somebody else is the way he has to deal with you. The great thing about the Holy Spirit is he knows us as individuals and he works with us and through us in different ways and he manifests himself in different ways. And we don't need to be jealous of one another and competing with one another. We need to be working together with one another so we become one body working as a whole unit. So in John 20, after Jesus was resurrected from the dead, he appeared to the disciples and the Bible says he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. But then if you turn the Bible over two pages to the first chapter of Acts, he said, now go and wait in the upper room for the promised outpouring of the Spirit. And that's when they were, the Bible calls it, baptized in the Holy Spirit. They were flooded with the Holy Spirit. Their souls were diffused with the Holy Spirit. But then even in addition to that, we see Peter was in that upper room and he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. But even with that, there are many times where the Bible says, and Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. So we need fresh infillings and, and, and fresh uh, visitations